Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome back to Crossout. So, a few of you have asked if I can do some Crossout build guide videos where I talk about the building process in general, and how to go about making a creation of your own that could work for you. So, I'm going to go through this step by step, and hopefully it's not too drawn out and boring for you guys either. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is consider what your build is going to be. What's its purpose? Is it going to be a heavily armoured tank? Or how about a fast moving rocket buggy? Or what about a mid range machine gun build? Since this is a vehicular combat game, the choice of weapons could be a good place to start. Take a look at the weapons you have available and think about the characteristics of the ones you want to use. For example, if I want to build something that uses auto cannons, I need to consider the pros and cons of auto cannons in general. So, they do a reasonably high damage per shot, they're moderately fast firing but they're also very slow to turn. This makes them ideal for mid-range use and sometimes close range, but you certainly want to avoid getting to brawls constantly with faster moving vehicles. So, depending on the type of weapons you want to use, you need to build around their strengths and make up for some of their weaknesses. In the example with the autocannons, a suitable build could be something that prioritises speed and stability. Since the autocannons have a fairly high amount of recoil, you don't want a build that's too light or it'll be knocked about with each shot. At the same time, you want to be fairly fast to avoid taking too much return fire and keeping enemies within your optimum range. Once you've decided what kind of vehicle you want to build, there are more things you need to consider. Here are some building techniques that you might find useful. Firstly, always remember that redundancy is key. Parts are going to get destroyed, and most parts don't have a lot of structure points, so layer it up where you see fit. Adding extra parts that are in front of others ensures that you can take multiple hits in that area without being too badly damaged. The same goes for mobility pieces such as wheels and tracks. Having more of them can be beneficial to keeping yourself moving after taking a hit. The next thing is to be mindful of weld points. Parts that are not properly secured to two or more other parts are vulnerable to being destroyed if the part they're connected to is taken off. Always attach structure pieces, especially large single pieces, to more than one other part to ensure they are not dependent on just one parent piece. Additionally, bear in mind that while larger parts have more structure points, meaning they can take more hits before being destroyed, their larger size means that they're easier to hit, and when they are destroyed, you'll end up with a larger gap in your vehicle structure. The next thing to consider are hardware placements. Now, depending on the type of weapons you use and the purpose of the vehicle, the type of hardware you use can vary greatly. The main thing you need to bear in mind, though, is to keep them out of the line of fire as much as possible. However, having said that, parts such as weapon coolers and radiators can be built into the overall structure of the vehicle without much of an issue, but generators, ammo packs and fuel barrels should be kept hidden away, or at least away from anything critical to avoid taking severe damage when hit. Another thing to remember is the importance of cabin choice, since different cabins have different stats, you may want to utilise them accordingly. For example, the buggy cabin favours speed and lightweight builds but doesn't have high structure points, while the truck cabin favours slow moving tanky builds and has high structure points. Cabin size will also play a part since they all take up different amounts of space and you'll need to factor that into your overall build shape. Certain cabin placements may look pretty but remember to always protect them well. For example, if you're going for a fast moving brawler, you may want to keep your cabin close to the middle to give it better protection. Or if you're going for a long range hilltop sniper, you could move your cabin further back in order to protect it while allowing space up front for weapons. Remember that frame pieces can be rotated and they don't necessarily need to be connected to each other. A technique I often use is what I call a split chassis, where two sets of frames are not connected to each other, but instead are connected to the main structure of the vehicle instead. Gaps like these are can be considered weak spots, but they are also useful for hiding things such as fuel barrels and ammo packs. The last but probably most important part is to test your vehicle. Since durability is a main mechanic in this game, don't risk your valuable hardware on an untested vehicle. The test drive mode can show problems with your vehicle before you take it into a battle proper. 
Also, one neat little trick you can do is press the ALT key or ALT in the garage. What this does is it shows off your well points on your vehicle, but it also shows off the weapon traverse limits. This can help you determine early on whether your weapons will have any kind of blind spots or issues aiming past each other, and this can also be tested in the test drive mode. But hopefully this helps you all out, it's by no means comprehensive, but I hope you guys find this useful regardless. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comments below, and hit that like button if you found the video interesting or entertaining. Also, subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.